Chapter 1 From San Francisco to London When I was 27 years old, I worked in an office in San Francisco. I did my job well and my future was promising. I was alone in the world and I was happy. On Saturday afternoons I didn't work. I sailed my little sailboat on San Francisco Bay. One Saturday afternoon, I sailed out too far. The strong afternoon wind pushed my sailboat out of the bay into the Pacific Ocean. That night, when I had lost all hope, a small British brig saw me and took me on board. The brig was sailing to London. The voyage was long and stormy. I worked as a sailor to pay for my trip. When I arrived in London, my clothes were old and dirty. I had only one dollar in my pocket. With this dollar, I ate and slept for the first twenty-four hours. During the next twenty-four hours, I didn't eat and didn't sleep. At about ten o'clock the following morning, I went to Portland Place. I saw a child walking past, holding a big pear. The child ate one small piece and then threw the pear onto the street. I stopped and looked at it. I was very hungry and I really wanted that pear. But every time I tried to get it, someone passed by and looked at me. I quickly turned in the other direction and waited for the person to pass by. I tried again and again to get that pear, but the same thing happened. I was desperate. I decided to get the pair and not to worry about the people who saw me. At that moment, a gentleman opened a window behind me and said, Come in here, please. A well-dressed servant opened the door. He took me to a beautiful room. Here, two old gentlemen were sitting and discussing something important. Their breakfast was on the table. I was very hungry and I stared at their breakfast. I want to tell the reader that the two gentlemen had made a bet several days before. I knew nothing about the bet until later. Let me tell you what happened. Chapter 2 An Unusual Bet The two old gentlemen were brothers. For several days, they argued about a very strange subject. They decided to end their argument with a bet, as the English usually do. The following was the subject of the bet. The Bank of England issued two banknotes of a million dollars each for a public transaction with a foreign country. England used one banknote and the other remained in the bank. At this point, Brother A said to Brother B, If an honest and intelligent stranger arrives in London without a friend and without money, except for the one million dollar banknote, he will starve to death. Brother B answered, No. I don't agree. Brother A said, If he goes to the bank or anywhere else to change this big note, the police will put him in prison. Everyone will think he stole it. They continued arguing for days until Brother B said, I'll bet $20,000 that the stranger will live for 30 days with the banknote and not go to prison. Brother A accepted the bet. He went to the bank and bought the $1 million banknote. After, he returned home and prepared a letter. Then the two brothers sat by the window and waited for the right man for the bet. They saw a lot of honest faces go by, but they were not intelligent enough. Several faces were intelligent, but they were not honest. A lot of faces were honest and intelligent, but they were not poor enough. Other faces were honest, intelligent, and poor, but they were not strangers. When they saw me from the window, they thought I was the right man. 
they asked me questions, and soon they knew my story. Finally, they told me I was the right man for the bet. I asked them to explain the bet. One of the gentlemen gave me an envelope. I wanted to open it, but he said, No, don't open it now. Wait until you are in your hotel room. Then read it very carefully. I was confused and I wanted to discuss the subject with them. But they didn't. I felt hurt because I was the subject of a joke. When I left their house, I looked for the pair on the street. It was gone. I was quite angry with those two gentlemen. Far from their house, I opened the envelope. I saw that there was money inside. I didn't stop to read their letter. I ran to the nearest eating place. I ate and ate and ate. At last, I took out the envelope with the money to pay for my meal. I looked at the banknote and almost fainted. It was a banknote worth five million dollars. I was speechless. I stared at the banknote. The two gentlemen had made a big mistake. They probably wanted to give me a one dollar banknote. I saw the owner of the eating place staring at the banknote, too. We were both surprised. I did not know what to do or say. So, I simply gave him the note and said, Give me the change, please. The owner apologized a thousand times. I'm very sorry, but I can't change this banknote, sir. I don't have any other money. Please change this note. The owner then said, You can pay for this food whenever you want, sir. I understand that you are a very rich gentleman. You like playing jokes on people by dressing like a poor man. You can come here and eat all you want, whenever you want. You can pay me when you want. Chapter 3 The Letter when I arrived, the same servant opened the door. I asked for the two gentlemen. They are gone, the servant said. Gone? Gone where? Oh, on a journey. But where did they go? To the continent, I think. The continent? There were no signature, no address, no date on the letter. How strange. I didn't know what to think. I went to a park, sat down and thought about what to do. After an hour, I reached the decision that follows. The two old gentlemen are playing a game that I don't understand. They are betting on me. But, at that time, I didn't know anything about the details of the bet. If I go to the Bank of England to return the banknote, the bank will ask me lots of questions. If I tell the truth, no one will believe me. They will put me in an asylum. If I tell a lie, the police will put me in prison. I can't even give it to anyone because no honest person will want it. I can do only one thing, I must keep the bill for a whole month. And I must not lose it. If I help the old man to win his bet, he will give me the job I want. The idea of an important job with a big salary made me happy. With this exciting idea in mind, I began walking down the streets of London. Chapter 4 At the Tailors Every time I passed in front of a tailor's, I wanted to enter and buy some new clothes. But I had no money to pay for them. The one million dollar banknote in my pocket was useless. I passed in front of the same tailor six times. At last I entered. I quietly asked if they had an old, unattractive suit that no one wanted to buy. The man I spoke to nodded his head, 
but he didn't speak. Then another man looked at me and nodded his head. I went to him and he said, One moment, please. After some time, he took me to a back room. He looked at several ugly suits that no one wanted. He chose the worst for me. I really wanted a suit, so I said nothing. It was time to pay. Can you wait a few days for the money? I haven't got any small change with me. The man said, Oh, you haven't? Well, I thought gentlemen like you carried large change. My friend, I replied, you can't judge a stranger by the clothes he wears. I can pay for this suit. But, can you change a large banknote? Oh, of course we can change a large banknote, he said coldly. I gave him the banknote. He received it with a smile, a big smile that covered his face. When he read the banknote, his smile disappeared. The owner of the shop came over and asked me, What's the trouble? There isn't any trouble. I'm waiting for my ch